You're supposed to be my son, right? Ogata, run downstairs, put a tarp over anything that says Operation Hennessy on it. What about this guy? Just throw him over the other side. Two, three, come on. Welcome back to Cocktail Cinema, folks. Your weekly movie review podcast. As always, I am your first favorite bartender, third favorite author, Josh Price. And I'm joined by my co-host, Greg, and our producer, Shasti. Yo, yo. Hey, hey. What we got, Josh? This week, Bring it. we are reviewing our first foray into the works of Wes Anderson with Life Aquatic with Steve Zizzo. Zizzo? Zizzo. Hmm. This movie came out in 2004. As I said, it was directed by Wes Anderson, also partially written by Wes Anderson. Had a budget of $50 million and a box office return of a meager $34.8 million. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Kind of. I mean, it, it's an indie movie, so yeah. you expect it to be low, but it is also surprising that they continue to let him make movies like this <laughs> yeah. after that. Especially with the cast. You know, yeah. I mean, there's some big names in here. That's, so a, really, that's, a, that's a really low-end yeah. budget for, yeah. for such a stacked cast. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I I'd kind of like to start there because setting the framework for this movie mm-hmm. kind of explains its place in film history. Mm. So, uh, Bill Murray started his his uh, what do they call it? His second genesis as a as an actor doing indie movies with Wes Anderson. Um, I believe he did one or two before this with Wes. Okay. So. They've worked together a little bit by yeah. now. Um, and Wes Anderson had built up enough credit with, like, the Actors Guild that, like, the Coen brothers, they were, able, like, it was like, hey, I'm working on a new project. People would come to him. Yeah. And he just kind of found the people that he works the best with, like Jason Schwartzman's and everything yeah. and mm-hmm. Bill Murray's and everything. Um, Warner, Luke. One yeah. Of them, you know, yeah. Flip a coin. One of the, one of, one of the three true yeah uh, wilson brothers is in absolutely every movie he makes um so yeah this is the early stages of the twee movement you know so it, it's very quaint very despite some of the surface level darkness mm-hmm. that some of yeah. these topics have right. it is very innocent um and that's kind of anderson's style is and it, it it's it's a trademark of the way he makes films and it's strange in this movie in particular because it almost doesn't fit yeah like his style doesn't seem to fit for this movie yeah but... this movie seems a little out of place in in general mm-hmm. it's kind of uh off the wall i didn't it seems pieced together there's a lot of cool things to take from it as far as you know things you notice little easter eggs hidden here and there you mm-hmm. know you, f- you see like the belafontes in every shot and some mm-hmm. of the artwork there's a globe in a lot of them um just kind of the the color usage he uses all mm-hmm. pretty much have, primary yeah, colors you have and a stuff lot like of this, that, so. the same stuff but i think like you're saying like his even if you like don't really like his writing style mm-hmm. or his character development it's still not it doesn't take off at any point right. in this right. film and i think i think with it being essentially a mockumentary mm-hmm. you know what yeah. i mean i think that a lot of that is kind of going to be lost just based on the comedy aspect of it. Yeah. You know, you're going to get the characters contradicting like themselves mm-hmm. throughout the whole movie. Right. And in that case, there's no arc yep. established. It's, mm-hmm. yep. That's the annoying part of like watching some of the, yeah. these, these, these <laughs> For flicks. Sure. Well, and it, it's, it's disguised, but it's just a road trip movie. Yeah. Without the, yeah, the personal growth that goes right. with a road trip. Like, yes, Bill Murray at the end, like Steve has a, an epiphany moment, but it takes like, it, it takes into the last half hour of this film. This is, Almost a two-hour movie, mm. so you have to get through an hour. And t- I, I looked. You have to get through an hour and twenty-four minutes yeah. before things start to click and fall in place. And for me, it saves it. But I do understand why this film got the reception that it did mm. when it came out. Like yeah. since then, like the Criterion Collection people brought it back ten years after its release, mm. and they, you know, they 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 want people to experience it. Mm. But its real place in film history lies with Wes Anderson having established himself, and this is his first misstep, and he's still able to move forward. Right. So as filmmakers, it, it, we, we can take a lesson here. Like, this is a well-made movie. Mm. It is a beautiful movie. But some things just didn't work, mm. and Wes Anderson took the time to look at what he did with this film and figure it out and move forward. Mm-hmm. And he's been making movies ever since. Yeah. And you talked about that uh, that half hour spot or his epiphany moment. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't think it was on him. I think it's when his wife Eleanor comes back into play on the ship. It, he kind of got yeah got, still got his groove back pretty much right there. His, his wife was missing throughout the whole show because she disagreed with Ned mm-hmm. being brought on this journey, you know, to to kind of find his dad. Which yeah, that's when she it says starts. he shoots blank. Yeah, so I mean, sure. it seems there's a lot to be answered that goes unanswered in my opinion for this movie. I mean, I really wish we knew. Yeah. Who his dad was? I mean, I I was talking last night with with Shasta here about it. baby Esteban. Greg was his dad. Esteban. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, was like, wait, it's one of those movies you can like. See, Esteban has yep. a bit. Yep, <laughs> that'd be pretty funny. That'd be pretty funny. I, I mean, and it's that's a, another trademark of this film style yeah. where some of the things that feel important to the audience are not important to the story. Mm. Um, so there's there's a lot of questions that are left unanswered. Even the very end of the film, like there's so much that goes unanswered because the whole point of the story is life just continues going on. Yeah. Like you're just looking at a small window. Like he's making a movie mm. about a moment in his life. Right. And that's why they say it's with Steve Zissou or whatever. Yeah. You know? it's, it's just it's the the movie seems to directly go with like kind of his frame of thought, which is kind of boyish. You know, think with the mm-hmm. with the you know the the weird scale of, of the animals, the oceanic mm-hmm. animals that are kind of like clay, claymation or something yeah. like that. It just seems like his boyish mm-hmm. maneuvers as far as how he lives his life is coming through on the film as well. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And he said the window too, which I, I thought was kind of cool because th- those those window shots where they had those small circular mm-hmm. windows or those viewing windows, they have like the those portals. shots where, yeah, um, these cool shots where like, you know, there's an orca whale that's dancing next to yeah. the window. That's how he's <clears> creating depth in, in shots where he normally just has the most, mm. you, you see the most intense sets even in the life aquatic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But where, where they're stuck inside of a vessel mm. and his thing is that, that end point super far away to yeah. create that depth. It's like, how do you do, how do you open up a, mm. a, a small confined mm-hmm. vessel? How do you open put up a, a window submarine? there, yeah. put in yeah. a killer whale mm. 50 yards back and mm-hmm. have the shot right. just go. To, well, yeah, to that, that hallway is a huge thing he uses every time. Mm-hmm. Anytime yeah, yeah. there's like a kind of a, almost a dilemma in the movie it's all happening in that hallway it's like the opposite of we were talking about this yesterday mm-hmm. but like we, you know when we did uh some samurai like kurosawa would do the yeah. telescopic mm-hmm. uh, yeah. lens compression yeah and that's kind of it's it, it, it there's, it's obviously both to like compose your shot mm-hmm. but where kurosawa is using it to uh accentuate the the background and mm-hmm. kind of bring that closer west is the opposite where he uses like the most wide angle lens to mm-hmm. push it back yeah to get yeah. everything as like Mm-hmm. Yep. One there, and then now he creates his depth with mm-hmm. with the set, with mm-hmm. the with right. uh, uniform, you know, the characters' uniforms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything staggered. Kind and of you like- really notice that camera work, especially when uh, like the pirates come in, and where he's like kind of he, or he's biting off of his ropes and stuff like that. That's mm-hmm. you can tell right away that that camera changes completely. The, right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, that's where he actually goes does into some action mode. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, which I I kind of like twenty nine shots out of that Glock. Yeah, just right. Right. <laughs> Extendo. Extendo. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, and, and, and to kind of piggyback on what you were saying about his use of lenses and depth, you can tell that Wes Anderson is a person who watches – the second time he watches a movie, he's not watching what's going on. He's watching the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause in every one of his films, there's so much detail behind the action yeah. and behind the moment that – Even knickknacks. Yeah. You know, yeah, across books his, on his shelves. Scene. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, everything is very accentuated. Mm-hmm. And it just delivers this very unique film style that doesn't land with everybody, mm-hmm. but it's so iconic that everyone knows what you mean when you say yeah. tweet. I think it should be obviously some of his tricks and his, his usage and his the way he portrays his camera work and stuff is awesome. You know, mm-hmm. like a but just it's just too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a good tool, but not to have a whole movie driven on on this on this. Well, this, not this, this movie. Piggyback. Not this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, there was there was going to come a moment where we were going to come across a film like this that just doesn't stack up to its own hype. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's important to recognize why it doesn't stack yeah. up. Yeah. So we've got a great cast, so that's mm-hmm. not the problem. Yeah. Everybody's giving wonderful performances. Even, you know, Owen Wilson, yeah. who, not necessarily the greatest actor, mm-hmm. is giving a very good performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got phenomenal set design. And it's just the story itself falls flat mm-hmm. because it's not going anywhere. There's, yeah. it's an endless void. It's the, yep. it's the ocean. Yep. You know, so it recognizing that the and moving idea. forward and seeing what he does after this, this is a turning point for him. Right. Yeah. Like his his movies don't grow up, but Wes Anderson grows up yeah. because of 
Life Aquatic. And if you have you seen any of like the old Jacques Cousteau um, the documentaries, yeah, yeah they, 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 some of those follow like directly on his things, like the way it's shot and. Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool, but it's definitely making fun of it. It seems like it's a, little it's bit. a yeah, mockumentary. Know, yeah, exactly. It's, but it's that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like after, because you could still just get Wes Anderson style. Like, mm-hmm. like for example, like um, Rushmore, Tenet Bombs, mm-hmm. and Life Aquatic are referred to as like the his Finding Your Five Father Figure mm-hmm. uh, right, trio, right, right, right. and Life Aquatic is. I think undisputably like the worst film out of those three. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like what I'm getting at is like you could get Wes Anderson and still not fully catch on to this because mm-hmm. it's like so much mockumentary for the, the Cousteau right. stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's still like it's some reason a movie out of those three that I've seen twenty times more than, than yeah. the other two. Yeah, it's true. Even though I feel like they're it's stronger true. films. Yeah. There's it's still something about mm. I'm overlooking the terrible dialogue <laughs> yeah. and like the awful yeah. character arcs yeah. because it's kind of like I don't know, just that approach of mockumentary. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it's, it's it's I feel like there's I'm not I'm giving a little less credit to mm-hmm. like the script at that point. And Fair let's enough. be real, Bill Murray's God. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like a, you like to see what he's got to he's going to pull off, what he's going to yeah. do. He's kind of that wild card character, mm-hmm. but in this movie he's not really. Even though he's kind of supposed to be, he stays true to that. Dumb, he's, yeah, he's very like, lacking, he, lost leader. in translation. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. that character. Exactly. And if he, if he really cares about what people think of him, mm-hmm. you know, which is I think funny for being like a leader, especially after it sounds like he's been doing it for decades. And but he's got a group of uh, Island of Misfit Toys as as his cat as, yeah. as, his, as his as his team. Yeah. You know, like they said, uh, Klaus is a bus driver or something mm-hmm. like yeah. that. And so yeah, I mean, it's, it's just kind of funny that like he cares so much, and it's just a. I forget, like, I feel like you and I were having a conversation about somebody who, like, didn't believe in resumes, and that's, that's Steve Zissou. <laughs> right, right. Like, he doesn't believe in yeah. a resume. He's yeah. like, uh, you know, you came in, you were the pizza delivery boy. <laughs> right. You're my, yep. you're, you're on the crew. Yeah, you're my who guy. was that? Wow. Oh, it was uh, from The Sip. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was the gong show guy. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't believe Good in resumes. Good throwback there. <laughs> right. <laughs> do, you be- do you believe in bananas? Because they exist. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's... Bananas it, exist. Birds don't exist. Birds. Oh, they're, anyway. They're all spies. Anyway. They're charging. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to... I'm going to point out a moment in this film, because this rarely happens for me, that it was as if the heavens opened up and all the gods I don't believe in shone down light upon me and said, Josh... You don't have to work hard this week because Bill Murray name drops a drink in this movie and I didn't have to come up with nice. it. It was wonderful. I did put my own spin on it. However, I thought there was going to be some more, more, that's kind of anticlimactic there, Josh. Well, so, <laughs> it, so is Life Aquatic. So is the movie. That's what they're <laughs> Our drink for this week. Should have waited well until the last two minutes of the episode <laughs> if I ended it. Well, Eleanor. I, 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 you know, I just naturally have more of a progression from Bill Murray in this movie. <laughs> this is the rum cannonball. Now, uh, this this drink comes up in conversation because they're about to basically stage a siege on this old rundown hotel where they think that uh, Owen Wilson is being is being held. And Steve just offhandedly goes, they had a bartender who made the best right, rum cannonball. Right. So I thought it was going to be that or Campari. Campari <laughs> on the rocks. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, no. oh, God, no. I wouldn't so do gross. that to any of us. Uh Anyway, so this drink is an ounce and a half of dark rum. We're using uh, Kraken Black Rum today. Uh, an ounce of white rum, half an ounce of pama liqueur, two ounces of pineapple juice, half an ounce of grenadine. I threw in a little bit of, I threw like three dashes of grapefruit bitters, but you can also put uh, some ginger ale in there. And uh, if you want to float, make it a little steeper, you can float some 151 on top. But there is your Light rum on fire. cannonball. Cannonball. Which it's very strong for a rum drink. Mm. Mm. It's pretty good. That pineapple doesn't shine through as much as you expect it to. It's good. They work well together, everything. Sometimes it's sometimes it's about layers, sometimes mm-hmm. it's about the mixture melding, of everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah I I think it, the, the the first thing that comes to mind with this drink is very mellow and laid back, and I think that's why they kind of name dropped that drink. Is this isn't something punchy or flashy or very forward? 
it's something that you would just kind of offhandedly sip while you were having a discussion at a at, at a, a Caribbean side. bar. Yeah, poolside bar. Um, it's. I dig it. Hmm. I like it more than I thought it would because I'm not a big rum drinker. I love rum. I love rum, and I I I like the Kraken specifically because it's a lot of your spiced rums tend to be very spice forward mm. but kraken has a way of balancing their spice with the vanilla mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. never you, yep. you never get that overwhelming like myers flavor right. out of a kraken rum yeah so yeah this one nice drink yeah Put in the yeah book. speak and you know speaking of the kraken and 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 bioluminescent beasts that apparently <laughs> live under the water yeah that's a good i that one over my head that's good choice <laughs> let's dive back into this submarine and I'd like to take us to that last half hour of this movie where Bill Murray has kind of had his transformation where he's, he's just ready to retire. He's, he, nothing has worked out for him. And he gets in a helicopter with this person that he may or may not believe is his son. And we can debate that. Yeah, uh, I have a point. And I I, I, that's the first place I want to go with this. Just to, to lay out this last half hour, they hop in this helicopter. The helicopter falls apart crashes Owen Wilson's character dies and Bill Murray has to reckon with the emotional toll that takes upon him and I think it's curious that they have made such a strong point that Owen Wilson cannot be his son yeah and Steve may know that mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw it to you Greg because yeah. I know you have a talking point here well that's kind of perfectly perfectly set up lobbed it to me why in this movie does his wife Eleanor bring up that Steve shoots blanks? You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. that, why is it? Why is that such a? Uh, why is it in the movie? You know what I mean. I feel like it, it, the movie makes. I feel would grow more if that movie if that part wasn't there. Again, that's why we're kind of we we went like like back and forth in like four scenarios yesterday. Sure, sure, but mm -hmm. but regardless of if I, I'm gonna agree, you're not a hundred percent sure Ned's his son. Mm. And what I'm saying is that this isn't a driving point. I feel like for Russ Anderson's writing, when he said that she was too old to have kids, then mm -hmm. you find out five minutes later, she's like, I was only 34. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then is like, he was shooting blanks. It's mm -hmm. kind of like how he, it like, he his bullshit reality. is revealed. Yeah. He's just a dickhead. His bullshit is revealed throughout the, like, <laughs> yeah. them creating these two films. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was like, Sure, I'm not sold on it either. Yeah, yeah. But in my mind, that's that's Wes Anderson's. Yeah, yeah. And you definitely grow into hating him more and more. Where he's like yeah, a playful yeah. dumbass at first, and now you're realizing because he lies to Ned right off the bat one yeah. time, yeah. and then again, point blank. When did you find out about constantly me? throughout you know? that film? Yeah. Um, it's really upsetting. You know what I mean? Because you want to like him because he's he's fun. He's some somewhat mm -hmm. charismatic. He's Bill and stuff. Murray. You want to yeah, like right, him exactly. And then, um, you know, there was some foreshadowing, too, at the beginning of the movie when, after they, they leave the uh, the theater for his first um, showing of mm -hmm. uh, part one. Um, and the guy says, who are you going to kill off in the second one? Snaps a picture with, like, the, yeah. the throwaway camera. And he punches him in the face, gets it in the lips. So, I mean, there's a little bit of foreshadowing. And we should have known. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's yeah. all right in front of us. Because this it movie is. does not have much depth whatsoever. Well, they said the so. bus driver... Well, so the bus driver was the guy who checks the, the helicopter <laughs> <Right>. every, every <laughs> yeah. six months. Yeah. That's what I was like. Yeah. First time watching the movie, I'm like, that yeah. thing's going down. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, yeah, there's there's a lot of questions for me that were, mm -hmm. went unanswered. And I guess that was, like you were bringing up, that's just his kind of his writing style. And you're you're made to kind of fill in the blanks yourself. And mm -hmm. like I said, I went over like four scenarios, one of which I can't really say I'm Mike, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> fill in the blanks there. Shoot um, blanks. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's it's interesting like that. And like you said, a road trip movie, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, at first, I was I was like, this movie is gonna be tough because it's there's a lot of thought to it. Mm -hmm. Realizing that there's zero thought in this yeah. movie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and that, that's 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 important too because we yeah. went back and forth on yeah. how we were like how we were gonna review this movie, mm -hmm. and that was because it, it because it's a Wes Anderson movie and the way it portrays itself mm -hmm. on its face, you do think it's yeah. gonna have some depth, but really it's just this guy's a bad dad. Yeah, and it's like everybody's seen this movie, mm -hmm. you know, which is even for. A Fifty thousand dollar budget, thirty million dollar haul, thirty million dollar haul. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's a, that falls straight on its face. Yeah, you know, William Defoe and who's mm -hmm. who, I was disappointed in his. I mean, I love that guy. I love his but, character. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, do. But I feel like they could have put anybody up there to play. They that could character. have, and I, I think if if they gave him more of a badass role, like mm -hmm. it just just a couple of lengthened scenes, like mm -hmm. during the siege, it would have been perfect. Yeah. But he still 
they still get across that he's also looking for his father figure. True. Like they say it outright yeah. and they show it. Yeah. Like he just wants to live up to what Steve it. wants mm-hmm. from him. Yep. I mean, I guess with all these actors that we talked about, the one that really stands out to me and it goes, we haven't talked about her at all, Kate Blanchett. I think mm-hmm. that she actually was the best uh, actress in this movie. Yeah. Um, most believable, most straightforward. She mm-hmm. actually was one showing the mo- the most growth out of any of, of any of them because she had so much going on mm-hmm. prior to that, through that, and then with Wilson and everything. Like, but again, so I've got a, a, a I've, I've got a question because. There's a line that she says where she says, I need to find a baby for this father. (laughs) And it seems like she's just confused or she's commenting on Steve's situation. Mm. I don't think she's pregnant. Yeah. You're just fat. Well, I I think (laughs) I think she's leading them on. Because she like that was her in to get water on the water flotation boat. device. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I see you're filling in blanks too. Well, yeah, shooting blanks. Yeah, and they have blocks. Well, and like she's <laughs> she's fresh off the Lord of the Rings in this in this yeah. film. So like when you think about the character she was in those films, it's like oh she had a plan the whole time. Mm. So I'm just kind of carrying over like oh yeah. she's she's a she's playing characters that plan yeah. and especially being a journalist and someone who's mm-hmm. good with words and so this is how language. you got on the boat oh i'm pregnant i wanted to yeah it's like drew yeah. drew barrymore in that one thing where she's 40 and goes back to high school right? <laughs> it's all about good. never been kissed <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> so wet hot american summer yeah josie <laughs> grossie yeah i mean that's interesting yeah, I mean, there's like you said, there's a, there's a lot of room for conjecture, and there's some things that appear to be plot holes that mm. maybe aren't, and some things yeah. that don't appear to be plot holes that are. Yeah, and like we talked about writing style. This and boat stuff. is there's... full of holes. <laughs> right, true. Uh, but yeah, like talk about Wes Anderson, obviously, mm. uh, but like certain directors get away with it. Yeah, you know what I mean, where yeah. you actually come to enjoy that, like Guy Ritchie or mm-hmm. something like that. You you like that kind of aspect that he puts out, but again, or Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. No, I, I I think this film is important uh, for kind of bullshit reasons. Like, I, I will admit that. Like, this is not something that I, I disagree with the uh, with the with the groups that brought this film back. Mm. Um, like the Criterion Collection bringing it back. Like, I, I, I kind of disagree. Like, it, it didn't necessarily deserve that kind of praise. Yeah. Yes, it's it's. For its intended audience, it's, it is wonderful. It's fun, yeah. yeah. For, for the intended audience, exactly. But I don't necessarily like they want to. They make it seem like they want to put it on lists of films that. Well, that's just silly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I I love this movie. I think the last half just hour it's of this film is watch. amazing. Yeah. Not because it's like yeah. a great film yeah. mm-hmm. to check every yeah. box off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, it just as like getting a production boner for mm-hmm. some of these movies, right. it's like, like I could imagine like being one of his his set designers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I would I would quit. Just because of <laughs> how I'm just, detailed, and yeah. yeah. But yeah, that cool shot at the end where they like kind of cut the boat in half, mm-hmm. and like they're walking through all the different the perpendicular rooms. stuff. That's a yeah. really cool, shot. really cool they shot. They expose they expose the whole set yeah. after all those mm-hmm. yeah. those those uh, wide angle shots we yep. were talking about that just create depth throughout mm-hmm. the hallways yeah. when they're. They're yep. walking for a split second. They go through the four sets and mm. then upstairs. Mm. And Kate Blanchett just, just comes that's up another, the staircase. And that's another part that like goes into Steve's madness. Yeah, like yeah. He, mm-hmm. he makes him. He's he's literally just taking him on this run so he can think about what he's gonna fucking say. Yeah. And in comes Kate Blanchett. Like, oh, it's one room. It's like yeah. you know, everything's it's like, upstairs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. Type shit for everything he but, does. Well, yeah. and that's that's a very Wes Anderson thing. And I think he's that that's a great shot. But he's also done it better. Mm. Like. Uh, uh, the Grand Bud- Budapest Hotel has a similar. I haven't seen that similar, one. It, that's possibly my it's favorite. Like on the lobby and shit, it's all mm-hmm. kind of shy like that's that. supposed to be much dark, like the, the, his darkest film. Done, but that, right? where that's like an open for West Anderson, hotel. Okay. Where that's like an open hotel lobby. Mm-hmm. It's it's not exposing the set after True. in the sense where I'm talking about where you just see like the yeah. floor mm-hmm. joysticks coming yeah. out at you and saw it off. See, yeah, yeah. plywood you know, and yeah, skids yeah. and shit. Like it's that. like it's like a like a high school. Set in, on the mm-hmm. stage yeah. in the gymnasium. Yeah, that, that was, that, that was actually that. one of I'll my favorite shots. I, I, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly. I, will, what, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's the movement. same the crane movement. shot. Mm-hmm. The same movement. Same foul long. It, it portrays the same point. Again, I'm just mm-hmm. like nerding out on, on no, some I'll, aspects no, that, like, sure. I'll hand it to you. Shouldn't I'll come into play for like what we're doing. That's yeah. That's pretty much the only thing that I kind of like took that I liked enough 
about this movie. Yeah, and I will I will say about that shot on the boat that that Shasti's talking about is is it, it breaks the fourth wall without breaking the fourth like it, it bends yeah. the fourth wall, mm-hmm. and and that's something that is very difficult to do, and it it does show that Wes Anderson knows how to make movies, yeah. even if this one kind of falters. So this is still a very well made movie. It's still a very well shot. It's a beautiful film. Mm-hmm. It's just I think it falls short for a lot of people, and I. I intentionally stayed away from Rotten Tomatoes this week mm, so yeah. that I could I could be surprised. I tried to, yeah. Um, but, I mean, before we get to that, Greg, I'm going to toss it to you. Do you have any, any final thoughts before we uh, Final thoughts. I mean, kind of Shasti course. said that, you know, I've seen this movie a lot, you know, mm-hmm. dozens of times, uh, more so than some of his other works. Um, Tannenbaum's mm-hmm. I loved, you know, but, again, I haven't seen that in a long time either. I watched this movie three times this week just mm-hmm. to make sure that I'm going to be set on where my my head's at for my score mm-hmm. at the end of this day because I wanted to be critical enough but give it enough time to open my own yeah. brain and see it at different states. So I did my due diligence, <laughs> watched it a lot in the past. Um, movie doesn't do it for me. So that's my final thoughts. I mean, like you said, a yeah. lot of good points. That final scene where we're talking about the, the, mm-hmm. the ship in half and how you're able to see kind of – kind of Zisu's mind mm-hmm. you yeah. know what I mean like, yeah. there's a lot of symbolism Exposing in this movie the, mm-hmm. once, the so. symbolism in this movie you know with like the globes being around and the Belafonte always being in picture whether it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a picture a uh, prop or it's in the distance really cool to see um, but again does not work yeah. in my yeah. opinion and and Shasti I, I know I have a tendency to like like Steve in this film, just kind of railroad situations. Is there anything we haven't touched on today that really stands out to you about? Uh, this yeah, film? yeah, uh, there is, but I'll piggyback off of what Greg saying first, just like how it doesn't work for him. You mm-hmm. know, it's um, like you said, for the demographic it's made for, like it works for me. And I can yeah. still say that knowing it falls short mm-hmm. on two thirds of, of the aspects. Of, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that you want to conceptualize for like yeah. making these films. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um I, I just think that's interesting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, intended yeah. audience is a big thing. Does yes. it work for you? Yeah. Yes. It works for me. You know what I mean? And I thought I, I would be an intended audience. Like it was back cool in the day. Watching it with you I was I was a stoner back just in the like day. Us, <laughs> yeah. us, us kind of just like picking up on yeah. mm-hmm. on certain yeah. certain aspects of the movie, kind of bouncing ideas off each yeah. other. It was real cool. But uh, what we haven't touched on at all is another part that's really fun for me and why I've always loved this movie and probably why I watch more than the, the other ones is Sue George. Sue George. All, yeah. all the boat yeah. cuts. I'm going to talk about it. It's the most, it's the most fun. And the in my opinion, awesome. it's hard to say. Same thing as this mock, being a mockumentary. <laughs> hard to say it's original. It's fun. <laughs> but, and it's hard to say reason hard to say sue george yeah. doing david bowie songs yeah. in portuguese yeah. is the most original it's unique as fuck yeah, yeah. yeah. it's you can do a yeah. mockumentary have it be unique as fuck you yeah. can cover david bowie songs in portuguese yep. have it be unique as fuck and yep. then they add in the fucking the two casio like the mm-hmm. drum machines yeah, and they, the they have the couple beat, yeah. the drum machine thank you for scores. bringing that up dude yeah. <laughs> i can't that, believe we missed that's, that there's there's parts like that where it's like yeah. okay i don't expect any character or, or to have I will say one more thing too, real quick. Since mm-hmm. I got, we got like a couple minutes here. <laughs> the, the only character I, could, I really saw, and like you said, it's like you, you watch ninety nine percent of the movie, mm-hmm. and then you kind of see shit start to take off. Where Steve Z- Zisu in the beginning, Esteban is his partner, his best friend. He dies, right? Mm-hmm. And he made this movie, this whole production. He's at the theater. Mm-hmm. Everybody's asleep. Like he's the only mm-hmm. person oh, yeah. paying attention. Yeah. That movie ends. Nobody claps or anything. Mm-hmm. And he says he's going out for part two for for revenge. Mm-hmm. And my mind's like. No, you still want. It's like Birdman. He still wants like the critics' yeah. uh, approval. Approval. Yeah. Like so about, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I feel like everything adds on to his facade, mm-hmm. adds on to the bullshit. That's why they're using fake like sea creatures. Yeah. But but towards the end, after Ned dies, and what happens? They show they do the showing for the movie. He's not even in the theater. Mm-hmm. He's, outside He's outside on the outside, steps. Yeah. Everybody's in there, mm. freaking out. Round of applause. Yeah. And then when the as soon as the cameras come out and start flashing, that's when he puts, puts the kid on his shoulders. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's when it's like all for the accolades. And it, but it by the time he got him, it didn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was out as just like Birdman. Yeah. You know what I mean? In that sense, where it's like last scene we, we like see you kind of get your success and now it's like yeah. mm, peace. <laughs> well, but, and that was it was a good transition from that moment too, because in order to make you sit with that moment, they don't cut to a black screen with credits. Yeah. The credits roll over him Steve walking. walking down the street, and then Sue George playing his guitar. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like with still, the yellow font. It's still mm-hmm. engaging, so that you sit through these credits, and that, you are forced to really sit with right. 
that final moment. Mm-hmm. That's how Chris I do Stowe's appreciate that. like intros and outros are mm-hmm. for videos too. Like they use the same like font. And everything. God, I'm kicking myself yeah, yeah, for not yeah. bringing up Sue George. Jeez, that music in this movie is awesome. <laughs> yeah, for for those of you who have forgotten, Sue George was in City of God. Uh, City of God. Knockout yeah. Ned. Knockout yeah. Ned. He didn't play Ned in this movie though. No, right. <laughs> that was the Colonel Sanders tie, Owen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I believe that kind of brings us to our final segment. Right. Um, let's take a quick look at what the critics had to say about oh, this movie. Shit. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, I, I, I'll right preface here. this with I, I know that this did not get an initial strong performance, mm-hmm. like or, uh, as far as critics go. But over time, people kind of said, better. yeah, it, it, you know, the distance makes the heart grow fonder, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see where this lands. Okay. Because um, like I said, I didn't look it up, but I yeah. did, I did see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. My eyes are bad. Let me lean in here. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in. You're good. You're good. We've got a 57 from critics and an 82 from audiences. Wow, that's such a huge difference. That's a big gap. Wow. But it that's, goes that's to show with the critics, and like you're saying, how there's a resurgence yeah. and mm-hmm. kind of intended audience. Yeah. Yep. The for the intended audience, it lands, yeah. and you can see that. Like, I have movies like that. Yeah. No. Of I course. have reviewed same, movies like same, that. Same. That's right. All right. So, Greg, we're gonna toss it to you. Do you think the critics overpoured or underpoured this movie? I think they poured it pretty close, man. I mean, okay. I, might, I think they might have shortened it a little bit. I personally probably would put this in like a 65-ish mark. Um, okay. I would give it a little bit more credit than they did. Um, only for certain aspects. Um, that audience score is belligerent. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what I have to say. <laughs> I, I think it's slightly <coughs> underpoured. Um, I did these... 57 being so low and the audience score being that high makes sense to me. I th- and I normally like joke like I split the difference between these two, but I, I feel like it, it's 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 like a 70. I feel okay. like I feel like Zisu gives a 70, maybe 72 times. Um, I okay. Wes Anderson's style is my style. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it falls short. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, compared to some of his other ones. Like I I feel bad saying that I think. When I give my score, I do think they underpoured this. Mm. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I think this is about a, a 63. Mm. And I feel bad saying that because this whole time I wanted to really like this movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, I saw it's, it. It's I hard. saw it in high school. Yeah, and it was, it was, like, I didn't oh, I like that movie. It. And you watch it, and you're like, shit. Well, I, I remember the <laughs> one liners. Yeah, the one liners in this movie are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, quite yeah. a few. Like, yeah. you, you don't, you don't say. I'm normally, I love Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the dialogue has its moments, and I I feel bad because i do love this yeah. this this director and these these people um it just doesn't land for me yeah um, and i live and die by the one liner so it's yeah. like for me to give it that little of a score it's like, do the know. interns get glocks yes, yes. <laughs> no they, they share glocks? one no they share <laughs> one <laughs> i love it audience watchers listeners do you think that uh this movie was overported or underported by the critics do you think that we overported or, or overported it or underported it this drink, was it over poured? Kind of feels like it was. Uh, maybe I should have eaten dinner before I drank it. <laughs> Anybody want a peanut? That said, please drop your comments and your ratings down below. We love to talk to you. We'd love to engage on, you know, what you think about this movie and what movies you'd like to see us cover in the future. Absolutely. That'd be cool. If you'd like to get more involved, hop on down to the uh, description down below and click on that link for our Patreon where for as little as a dollar a month you can join our Patreon community and get full access to all of our Everything, content. To all of us. All, all, of, all of our stuff. All there's, of there's a lot of stuff that we don't have on YouTube. Right. Uh, whether that's because it was before we did cameras or because it's just not up anymore and it's an exclusive. Um, we've got an exclusive show called The Sip. We haven't talked about this in a while yeah. so I feel like throwing yeah. this out there. Uh, the Sip is... A uh, more topical show where we all get together and talk about a little bit of history, a little bit of pop culture, a little bit of movies, and we try to stir it together in a little bit of a cocktail of its own. Mm-hmm. You'll also get early access to all of our episodes and pilots, and you can interact with us directly there, again, for as little as a dollar a month, but, you know, we know you're generous people. Mm-hmm. We trust We you. do have a lot of good things coming down the pipeline. We do. So stay we do. tuned. Um, hop on for that dollar a month. It'll yeah. be worth it. Yeah, it, it absolutely will be. Um, it, it's worth it now. Mm-hmm. And you're worth it too. That said, 
we have to actually continue to make content for you wonderful people tonight so we're gonna cut this one here and say goodbye see you in the next one holy shit son of a bitch cut <laughs> nice yes